Hey there, welcome back to Tips Over Tea. This is episode 20. I am Nicole, your host. We had the great pleasure of speaking with Jennifer Cahoon today. She is a licensed acupuncturist and her primary patients are um, pregnant ladies. She helps with all things related to getting ready and having a great birth. And who knew acupuncture and pregnancy were a thing? Because I didn't. So if that is something that is interesting to you, I want to encourage you, grab your tea and listen in. Hey, everyone. Welcome to episode 20 of Tips Over Tea. I am filming from Hampton, Virginia. I'm at a friend's house. So different background scenery. Um, I would take you outside, but mosquitoes love me too much. And so, (laughs) yeah, you know, but uh, welcome to episode 20. I'm so excited to be able to speak with Jennifer Cahoon. Oh, my gracious, what you do. Welcome to the show. I'm so glad you're here with me today. Oh, thank you, Nicole. I'm excited to be here today, too. <laughs> awesome. Well, just in learning, I mean, we've we've conversed before, but just learning about what you do with respect to acupuncture and pregnancy and childbirth and all that. Can you share the benefits, like of the whole process, really, like benefits of having acupuncture during pregnancy, benefits of it during labor and delivery and stuff like that. And I'm going to hush because I know nothing and I'm going to let the expert speak. (laughs) Well, thank you for asking me to to talk about what women can experience during their pregnancy with acupuncture. So I think a lot of times it's just not well known and Mm -hmm. women experience these symptoms during pregnancy that they can't really take medication for, but they can try acupuncture. And Mm -hmm. that's what is exciting. So early in their pregnancy, if if maybe they have nausea, um, acupuncture is extremely helpful for that. And then mm-hmm. additionally, as their pregnancy, it, it, as it progresses, they may have different pain, um, possibly back pain, um, joint pain in, in their hips. And acupuncture is very helpful to help them through this as well. Um, Other symptoms they might experience could be insomnia, you know, maybe anxiety, Um, you know, maybe they're having acid reflux, Um, just just different, different problems that women go through, but they don't always seek help. And Mm -hmm. it's, it is available to them. So, and then one one piece that I, I'm really excited about is is helping women prepare for their labor because mm-hmm. a lot of times they're not really aware of additional steps that they can take. And acupuncture can help you have a more efficient labor and with less interventions. Mm-hmm. And so there are pre-birth treatments that start at 37 weeks and they continue weekly until you give birth. Mm-hmm. And so it's it's really about reducing your stress, calming the mind, body, and spirit, and then encouraging cervical ripening, mm-hmm. and then moving forward and making sure that baby's in the right position, and, and then making sure mom's mentally ready for the labor and delivery. So it's it's pretty exciting process, and and then that brings you into the labor and delivery, and some moms, you know, might have, you know, might go into labor and and start having contractions and go into the hospital, and and then in that case, acupuncture is very helpful um, once their contractions start, mm-hmm. and. If you start early, right um, when the contractions are starting, it's it's more effective. So it is important um, to have your partner help you and and press on these points when your contraction starts. And if it's if it doesn't help, if it's not feeling like you're in more control, then then your birth birthing support team, you know, can try other points. But it also can help if your if your contractions have started to stall. There are points mm-hmm. that you can use to help help the contractions get going again. And and then some moms 
you know, maybe their labor isn't starting and they may have a, a medical induction planned and they want to prepare themselves for that medical induction. So then they can have treatments as well to, to prepare, to either help them progress, you know, faster when they have the medical induction or, or I shouldn't say not faster in the sense of with discomfort, but just making mm -hmm. the, the process easier for them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, you know, and if, if the mom went into labor without the medical induction, then, then that would be wonderful too. So, okay. so it's, it's more of a, a labor preparation um, type treatment. So. Very cool. So yeah. you've worked with both, I guess, new moms, like first time moms and, and seasoned moms, I imagine. Yes. Yeah. Um, what have you noticed most with new moms, and especially um, with during COVID, like have things changed, mm -hmm. like as far as that goes, just because they're even in non COVID times, there may be people who are alone. So how can they help themselves? too like if they don't have a partner that can press on points is there some something that that someone can do when they're alone in this process too yes there are points that they can use um that they can um access themselves mm -hmm. and and find it comforting and you know what i found during covid is that when moms are having a healthy pregnancy, which is a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. A lot of times uh, their visits were, they had less visits mm -hmm. with their provider. And so they found it helpful um, when I would go into their home and give them an acupuncture treatment, mm -hmm. um, kind of in between, you know, their visits with their provider. So it kind of helped them have, you know, more information and, and, we're able to do more um, than yeah. just wait for a virtual visit or or their 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 net follow up visit that might have been a little longer than they mm -hmm. wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's that's very helpful. Um, what would you say some of the common questions that you get from either seasoned moms or or new moms that somebody watching this later may have maybe in mind? Um, that they they would maybe want to ask you. Do you have any that you can that come off the top of your head? Because I know usually when we're in a moment, we're ready to answer questions. But <laughs> yeah, I I think a lot of times the women aren't feeling grounded or they're not in the place yet to to move forward. And I I think it's not that they come out and ask me how that's possible it's more after mm -hmm. they've had the treatments that they're telling me i feel ready to proceed and and you know they're they're happy they've done everything that they feel they can do and you know whatever happens they're at peace with with the process so that to me is is i i'm happy that the moms are in this place of of feeling grounded and, and ready to move forward. So, yeah, that is a big help. It's, it's kind of, mm -hmm. kind of like, I wouldn't say doula, but you're like, you're kind of a coach. <laughs> you're right. Like, yes, I, I have taken the doula training and mm -hmm. I, I, I find that amazing too. So <laughs> I, I, um, I mean, when I do support the women, I am in the acupuncturist role, but mm -hmm. I think I do want them to have a doula as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's mm -hmm. really important. It's like a birthing team. <laughs> yes. That's what I call it, the dream team. It's like, <laughs> it's, it's like so. I love that. Um, have you ever had someone like afraid of needles? Cause I, I know they're, I know like, but afraid of needles, but like, they are, they really want a natural way of dealing with the stuff that they have to deal with during pregnancy. Like, how do you make them feel comfortable with going through and, and working with, with needles? So I do explain that the needles are ab about the diameter of your hair. So they're mm -hmm. very thin and fine. Mm -hmm. And 
And what I do is I walk the patient through the process and I always tell them that if at any time, time they're in any discomfort, I'll remove the needle right away. And if, if they don't want any more needles inserted, you know, we'll, we'll make it, we'll make do with where we are. Um, mm -hmm. So I always want them to feel that the patient to feel that they're in control of the treatment and it's, it's comfortable for them. And during labor and delivery, I actually don't use needles. I use acupressure. Okay. So you know, many, it's, um, it's actually, I feel it's, it's even more effective um, at that time because things yeah. are moving. It's, it's a dynamic environment. So it's, it's great to, to be able to just walk over and use your hands for that. I was just going to say, even just hitting, having someone that, that you have a, a really good relationship, putting their hands on you is comforting yes. in and of itself. Like you got all these doctors and nurses and strangers, so to speak, even if you've met them in, you know, previous appointments, they're still not, you know, and so having someone who you've worked with closely, put their hands on you and, and then on those pressure points is like that much more comforting for that very dynamic time. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think so too. Yeah. Well, that's really cool that you offer that. Um, sounds like you need to train like a whole bunch of people because I know you don't have this one birth at a time. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. <laughs> you, you, just like many doulas as well, <laughs> you, you have to be able to make yourself available. <laughs> so. yeah. Well, it definitely helps that it's, there's a clear passion that you when you're doing that, that you're doing that. So. Yeah. That's really cool. Anyone who's gotten a chance to work with you is so lucky. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, I was like, I was gonna ask something, but I interrupted myself and then I forgot. <laughs> um, what are some things? Because of course, not a, where are you located again? I am in Boston, Massachusetts, and okay. I do have have an office. Um, in Boston in the Fort Point area, uh, but I also do provide home visits and virtual visits actually mm -hmm. um, in Massachusetts. And the home visits Very are more cool. in the surrounding Boston area, so. Sure. Okay, well, it's good to know that you also do some virtual, because I was gonna yeah. say for for um, for anybody who's watch who watches this that's not in Massachusetts, like what are some things they can maybe look for, ask if they're looking for an acupuncturist near them, like what should they, um, you know, what kind of questions can they ask to make sure they are receiving the proper treatments and things as, as they go through this process? I always recommend that they ask for or research an acupuncturist that's trained in birth work. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's additional training uh, that they you know, that we study and um, it's it's really helpful for the moms to yeah. have that additional training, so. I imagine so, because um, that's a very special population, right? It's a delicate situation. Yes, yeah. yeah. Very cool. So how long have you, when you first got into acupuncture, have you, did you always go straight to the birth work? I mean, did you get trained in birth from the get-go or did it just something just develop? How did that start? It was interesting. I, When I was in acupuncture school, I did take a, a pregnancy and infertility course. Mm -hmm. um, but then after I graduated, I became pregnant. And so it was, it, it was a benefit of acupuncture treatments that I was getting at the time. So, and it was, really exciting and um, unexpected, I should say. But yeah. what I loved about it was I knew so much at that time of how acupuncture could help. Mm -hmm. And so that is really what led me to be to want to share with with other women of how, you know, they could benefit from acupuncture. And so I was able to have acupuncture treatments throughout my pregnancy. And then mm -hmm. um, I had acupuncture to prepare 
me for labor and delivery as well. And I had a doula during my birth. Um, so all of that was, was just an amazing experience for me. And I just wanted, I want other moms to have access to that too. Well, that's, isn't that fun? That's how we, a lot of times we end up in our career because of things that we've been through and experienced and got the benefits of like, this needs to be for everyone. Yes. <laughs> Exactly. Everyone can have <laughs> yes. If, if they are interested, it's yes. Yeah. Have it. So I imagine with virtual work, um, well, two questions just came to mind. With virtual work, do you only work virtually with people you've seen in person, or do you can would you work with anyone who who just happens to find this video later and say, Oh, I need Jennifer in my life? <laughs> oh, well, I am only able to work um, virtually with people who live in Massachusetts. Okay. Um, so, so you have to be in Massachusetts at the time um, that I'm treating you. Mm -hmm. And so that's um, that's the first piece. But then I can meet with you first virtually and, and mm -hmm. I, I don't have to see you in person first. And so okay. that's that's fine. And actually, I do meet with all my patients virtually first for the intake, intake exam. And then, mm -hmm. and then we decide what's the best way to receive treatments. Very cool. So, so and that's, that's really good to know for someone. Um, if they're not in Massachusetts, and they catch this, they'll, they can say, if they know someone there who they know where to refer. <laughs> so that's my hope yeah. anyway. <laughs> yes. And that would be great. And if you're not in Massachusetts, I can try to help you find someone as well, because I do, I meet monthly. There's a mentorship program, a peer to peer mentorship program that I work with, with other acupuncturists um, internationally. They're, they're actually all over the world. So, um, help you find someone. So. I love that. Yay. <laughs> um, so when you do meet with your virtual, your clients virtually, I imagine are you teaching them acupressure so they can know how to use where, you know, what points um, to do the pressure on? Is that how you meet with them virtually? It's a combination. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I mail them different tools to use. Uh, I, other and sometimes I I ask them to just use their hands and use acupressure. Mm -hmm. And there's there's different tools, um, the C bands that some people are familiar with for mm -hmm. sea sickness. Mm -hmm. um, I use those a lot. And then also there's um, a moxa stick, and mm -hmm. it's it's a Chinese herb, and it it can impact points. Um, mm -hmm different points in different ways by a warming. Um, it's a warming tool to, mm. to kind of activate the point. So, mm. so nice. those, are the, those are the main tools I think, that I use. Okay. Interesting. So, so I've never had acupuncture ever. So when you said warming the points, is that something like even when someone comes in for treatment, do you, how, do you warm the points first before you, um, <laughs> Place the needles. No, um, it depends. Um, but typically, you put the needle in first, mm -hmm. and then and then you can use moxa. Sometimes you can place moxa on the needle, um, mm -hmm. or sometimes you can use the moxa pole and and warm around the needle where it is. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes you can use moxa directly um, at the point and just mm -hmm. and just warm the point and not and you don't need to use a needle. Okay. So, so cool. All the things, tricks of the trade. Yes. <laughs> like so, we'll figure so out how tools. we can work with you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Very cool. Thanks. I'm excited for all the mums. Mm -hmm. I never, I never, it never crossed my mind that acupuncture was something that could be used in that capacity. So I'm glad that that is a thing <laughs> Yes, <laughs> for holistic people out there. Um, and that's exactly why I have you here because I, 
because I'm learning. I'm so selfishly a little bit because um, I'm learning stuff. <laughs> but Good. I just want, I really want um, to expose people to different ways of taking care of themselves that do not necessarily involve going under the knife, taking medication. And, and especially, of course, during that part, that time in their lives, there are so few things that you can take anyway and you don't want to take because you want the best for your, your munchkin. Um, yes. I was so well. I know just from learning from the functional medicine training I've learned, I've had um, reducing stress and stuff like that during even before, during and during pregnancy is is got a great impact on the fetus and the child once born. So go ahead. Yes, I I think if the mom is 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 relaxed, that's it, it's it's keeping the baby relaxed too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can imagine that would make things easier um, during the birth in general. How does it? Because um, I know just in in my family, just not not to disclose who in my family, just to keep you know some privacy. But what has happened is the cervix doesn't open up enough. And so they end up having to do a C-section. Um, mm. Is there a way, have you seen that, like that initially happened and then acupressure being applied during labor or whatever, um, that it has helped change that or or how has acupressure helped with that? So, so there are, there is a, a, a specific point that helps with cervical dilation. Mm -hmm. um, Ideally, it's it's about preparing the body, you know, starting at that thirty-seven week point, mm -hmm. and 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 preparing you um, bef before your labor starts. Um, <clears throat> some sometimes, excuse me, mm -hmm. sometimes I'm just going to have. A sip. Mm -hmm. I know I forgot my tea today because I oh. <laughs> environment, but I'll go grab some after the call. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> some in East Asian medicine, there's different reasons for the for the things not progressing. Mm -hmm. So it's important to to make sure that those are addressed before labor mm. and and that labor can progress um, you know as it as it intended um, once it starts mm. but you know if if you started you know during labor and there there would be different things that we could try and mm -hmm. and and work through um, but you know sometimes that that's what you know you need to do and then that's okay yeah. too it is it is yeah yeah um, so that's that's very that was that's interesting to me um i imagine and i'm not saying that you're an expert on this but it just came to mind as we were talking um about chakras root sacral chakra work probably could aid in that too um just getting those back those in balance and stuff that feeling of security and safety and just balancing out. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm. I'm sure. I. I. I don't have a lot of background in it. Yeah, but yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> it's that feeling of of being grounded and in mm -hmm. control. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which is what you help, like when they you're by educating them in the process ahead of time, they can go in feeling more controlled in 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 that environment that's not theirs, <laughs> their home or, yeah. Yes. Yes, and exactly. Really trying to make that make the surroundings as much of their own as 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 they can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I can imagine that because I, I just watching my sister go through the process. I'm like that seems so scary, especially as a first time mom. It's so scary. Mm -hmm. Mom, it's a beautiful thing, um, but that the fact that you give the moms, you know, that comfort and that power 
in their mind and in their body is just, I really appreciate that. And thank you on behalf of all the new moms in Aww. season. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Well, we have, as you, like I said, 30 minutes goes by crazy fast. Oh, wow. We only have a few, <laughs> a few minutes left. Um, and so I always like to get, as we're getting towards the end, I always like to ask, is there any like workshops that you have coming up that you would like to share and invite people to? Um, any last minute tips or points that you would like to share that someone could use? Um, feel free, floor is yours and I'm all ears. Oh, great. Yes. I. I offer a monthly course on five meaningful ways to prepare for a natural childbirth. Mm -hmm. And you can sign up through my website. The next time is August 17th, and it's at 7.30 p.m. and Eastern. And mm -hmm. I'd love to see you there. And that is an educational session. It's for information. And anyone is welcome to join for that session. Very cool. Oh my goodness. I'm definitely going to make sure I get that word out. Oh, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Any um, last minute tips that just popped in your head that I, of a, of a question I maybe didn't ask, think to ask or anything like that? I, I feel, I feel that you've asked everything that I would like to share. So thank you. Okay. Excellent. Yes. <laughs> You're welcome. Well, awesome. With that, then I will wish you an amazing rest of your Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. And, and you uh, as well. Thank you. I received that. <laughs> um, I am going to uh, close out the show by thanking everyone who was able to watch live and anyone who is taking the time to watch this later really appreciate your time and attention and i hope you got a lot of good information out of that um, if you still have any questions jennifer's contact information will be in the description or is in the description so i encourage you to reach out to her and um, i'm sure she'll be more than happy to answer questions and guide you like you said you, if you if you're not in the massachusetts area she may have somebody she could refer you to so um, yes. that's how beautiful her heart is she just like me, like the bottom line is get you taken care of. Yes. <laughs> Whether it be with me or someone else, just get you taken care of. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Well, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, please take a moment to click like and subscribe. Click the bell so you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video or we go live. I would really appreciate that. Share it with someone you know could use this information. And until then, I will see you guys next week. Thanks again, Jennifer. Ciao, everybody. Thank you, Nicole. You're welcome. <laughs> Me and this broadcast button, I, I'm ridiculous with it. All right, ciao. <laughs> Bye. Thanks again for tuning in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and click the bell so you'll be notified anytime we upload a new video or go live. And as always, if you have any questions or anything, feel free to post it in the comments. We're always checking that. In the meantime, have a great rest of your day.